chapter 8. Set the trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. Israel shall cry unto me, My God, we know thee. Israel hath cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver and their gold have they made them idols, that they may be cut off. Thy calf, O Samaria, hath cast thee off. Mine anger is kindled against them. How long will it be be, ere they attain to innocency? For from Israel was it also, the workmen made it. Therefore it is not God, but the calf of Samaria shall be broken in pieces. For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. It hath no stock, the bud shall yield no meal. If so, be it yield, the strangers shall swallow it up. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. For they are gone up to Assyria, a wild ass alone by himself. Ephraim hath hired lovers. Yea, though they have hired among the nations, now will I gather them, and they shall sorrow a little for the burden of the king of princes. Because Ephraim hath made many altars to sin, altars shall be unto him to sin. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. They sacrifice flesh for the sacrifices of mine offerings, and eat it, but the Lord accepteth them not. Now will he remember their iniquity, and visit their sins. They shall return to Egypt. For Israel hath forgotten his Maker, and buildeth temples. And Judah hath multiplied fenced cities, but I will send a fire upon his cities, and it shall devour the palaces thereof. Here in chapter 8, Hosea is basically telling anybody who will listen what is going to happen to Israel. You have to understand, you know, I mean, this is an ongoing thing that we've seen, is just how arrogant, hard-hearted, stiff-necked, uh, idol-worshipping Israel was. Their first king set up two golden calves in Israel for them to worship in similitude of the golden calf that was done when these people were just come out of Egypt. And the golden calf worship was pornographic and just absolute corruption, but it was done so the people would not go down to worship at the temple in Jerusalem. And here Hosea is telling people, set the trumpet to the mouth, in other words, announce this really loud, he shall come as an eagle. The, the, the judgment is going to come as an eagle against the house of the Lord because they have transgressed my covenant. They have re, they've been spiritual harlots and whores and transgressed against my law, broken every law, every covenant. They're not being righteous. Israel shall cry unto me, My Lord, we know thee. And they'll think, Yeah, well, we do. We, we know about you. But they don't. Israel is cast off the thing that is good. Basically, Israel is not doing the good things that they're supposed to do. The enemy shall come after because they are not righteous. They have set up kings, but not by inspiration. They have made princes, and it, I, I don't know who they are. They certainly aren't living the law that I established for them. They aren't being honest. Of their silver and gold, have they made them idols, you know, that they may be cut off. Well, if you, I, if you worship idols, God, God's not going to support you. Thy calf, this golden calf, was set up. O Samaria, which was set up on Mount Gerizim, which part of became the Samaria, Samaritan worshiping, which is why the Jews didn't want anything to do with them, has cast thee off. The calf has cast thee off. Calf isn't going to do anything for you. Mine anger is killed against you. How long will it be ere you, they obtain any innocency? How long is it before you're going to be righteous? There we go. It says verse 8. Uh, 8 and 9, Israel is swallowed up, now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein there is no pleasure, for they are gone up to Assyria, a wild ass alone by himself, he's three his hired lovers. A wild ass was one of the most independent animals known to mankind, totally unwilling to be led, be domesticated, do anything else, and that's basically how northern Israel was. And they've gone up to Assyria is basically saying they're going to be captured, they're going to be taken. Because you're so determined to be on your own, to be independent, to have nothing to do with God, you know, you're going to, you're going to be captured by Assyria. 
Ephraim hath hired lovers. In other words, Ephraim, which is the leader of the northern ten tribes, and is the example for the northern ten tribes, basically saying, has hired lovers, and that basically has paid tribute to or made alliances with other countries to protect her, to work together with her, whatever. Yeah, though they have hired among the nations, now will I gather them and basically saying, it doesn't make any difference what you do. What matters is what I do. Verse 11, because if you have made many altars to sin, so all kinds of idols, that they used to have individual shrines inside the houses, most of them. Altars shall be unto him to sin. These people are going to be, every time they set up an altar, it's for, it's for worshiping idols and for sinning, for sacrificing their babies to, all kinds of things. I have written to him the great things of my law. I have given you the law that would elevate you, to give you eternal life. But they were counted as a strange thing. I don't want to have anything to do with this. Why would I want to have anything to do with this stupid thing? I can have more fun worshiping these other gods here. That's what these people in Israel were saying. They sacrificed flesh for the sacrifices of my offer. That was human flesh instead of animals. And they eat it. The Lord does not accept their sacrifices. Now he's going to remember their iniquity and visit their sins. They shall return to Egypt. Now, Egypt here is symbolic of the country of their first slavery, their first captivity. Only now, Egypt is actually just the word symbol for Assyria because Assyria came and captured them. And then it says 14, For Israel hath forgotten his maker and build the temples. They were building their own temples to their own false gods. And Judah had multiplied her fenced cities, so Judah was putting up cities to defend herself against attack. But I will send a fire upon the cities and devour the palaces thereof. In other words, the kings aren't going to be safe either. Despite the alliances, if you don't live righteously, you aren't going to have anything. 